Yeah, that's, that's some good advice. Um, so, here, here's another question I know you probably get a lot too. Do you think that the rise of or the high levels of HIV, you think there's a correlation between the DL things? I know, I hear a lot of this goes on in Atlanta, down south and stuff like that. And I hear a, the urban myth. I don't, I don't even really know if it's a myth or urban legend, but do you think that the DL phenomenon is that a direct is there a direct correlation between that and the high levels of HIV amongst black females? Do you do you feel that that's correct? Because I don't really think there's any official um, study out there that can prove that, but I think that's the common belief amongst a lot of people. So, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the CDC has done some studies. Okay. And have released information. Okay. And have stated that you know they don't call it the, the men that they have studied. They don't call them download. They call them MSM, meaning men who have sex with men because the download men don't identify as gay. Right. And they don't identify as download. So they're men who have sex with men, uh, but also have wives and girlfriends. So the okay. CDC released the study. Um, I think twice that there has been some correlation between men who have sex with other men and how that has been a contributing factor of the HIV rise in black women. Okay. And black women, because they ask the men, like, well, do you have unprotected sex? And they say yes. And they say, well, do you have unprotected sex with women? And they say yes. So they saw that those correlations have been contributing factors to the rise in HIV in women. Now, I've, I've heard like this, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I guess they, what's that show that Ice-T did like a, um, he used to play the cop or something like that, Law and Order, I believe. I guess they had a particular episode, episode on there talking about, you know, men living on the down low. They had a case on there. And I guess, I, I, I'm believing I got it from this particular episode when they were saying how, this explain why men don't necessarily protect themselves because I guess that's a way of them admitting to being gay or bisexual. I mean, right. have you heard that argument before? Yes, I mean, I, I, mean, I know lots of men do that. I'm just put on the comments and I mean, I'm gay. Right. Yeah, so they don't, put other men don't. That's why they don't do condoms. Or, you know, like, you look cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's their argument. Well, he looks like me, he looks straight, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like a regular hood dude, so I'm not, why would I wear condom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, also in the book, I guess you, you know, you kind of dis describe the DL scene from, like, you know, um, from the East Coast standpoint and from the West Coast standpoint. So, what were some of the differences and some of the, you know, similarities and differences between the East Coast and the West Coast and like how difficult was it determining who was on the down low and who wasn't and what were some of the dangers of you know maybe going there with the wrong person you know and um, do you kind of think that it's kind of like a secret society or like a, a community within itself of individuals that kind of watch out for each other and you know protect each other and you know um, things of that nature Yes, it is a secret society, you know, and it is a society where we look out for each other and help each other to navigate this business, mm -hmm. um, provide resources and networking opportunities. Um, there really, I mean, the, the only similarity, the only difference I would say between the East Coast and the West Coast and down the road is that sometimes, you know, it's a, you know, LA is much, just much more laid, but more laid back than New York or the East Coast period, but you know, there's a lot of similarities. You have to be introduced, you know, into the scene, um, especially in the download subculture of gay subculture within the entertainment industry. And um, it's all about, you know, making sure you're able to keep those secrets. Like I said, it, like I said it's a secret society, so being a part of that culture and lifestyle, you know, you got to be someone who can be trusted that you won't go back and say, say right, anything. Like right. you got just as much to lose as those. Who are a part of it, so you know. I 
think that's one of the, the things that we always look for. Mm-hmm. With, um, you know, what does this brother have to lose or this sister have to lose? You know, and a lot of times they have their family, they have their career, they have a whole, you know, livelihood that they don't want to jeopardize or lose. So I know they're not going to see anything. Yeah. So it's definitely, you know, it would, you know, a, an experience, you know, that, you know, it just, I've learned and grown from it, but also realize, you know, it's not going to end. It's going to continue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, as long as homophobia continues to exist within our community. Yeah. So, do you think that the, um, I kind of, kind of t- touched on the question I asked earlier. Do you think that we are more, that the DL phenomenon, is it more, um, prevalent in the black community? Because I, I, I kind of feel that with the white community, homosexuality is more, accepted. I mean, it's easier to be a white gay male and come out of the closet. And I'm not saying that they don't have issues either, but it seems like it's more socially acceptable for a white person or white male, maybe even white females to come out and say, hey, I'm gay, I'm lesbian. So do you think that this is something that really impacts us the most? Because, you know, like you said earlier, the church has been a pillar and a lot of, you know, blacks have been raised up with the idea, you know, Oh, this is immoral, this is wrong. So do you think this is something that really impacts us the most as a community? Yeah, I think it impacts the black and Hispanic community. Yeah, it's um, much more so than like you said, the white community, our white counterparts. But even you know, even Indian culture or Asian culture it impacts them just as much as well as oh, yeah. they can just come out due to their, you know, cultural um, um lifestyle and the cultural upbringing as well so but I don't think that you know it's much more prevalent and down low men in the black gay community than any other community I just think that we who are black our struggles are we different. know that because yeah. our experience because we're black uh-huh. so we don't, we're not white we're not Asian we're right. not Hispanic so we don't know what, what that number could be for them but I've heard you know from my other counterparts and friends who are different ethnicities you know, say and talk about the download communities where they come from and the men that they've been with. So mm-hmm. it's just as prevalent. So I right. think there's like a, you know, a different number. Yeah. And I've, uh, and I had a, you know, a few more couple questions. Um, so I had a, dif- I had a discussion with one of my, uh, female friends and I was wondering, um, what do you think about this? She she kind of feels, and I've heard this from other people that fraternities, because I know you mentioned that in the book too. Do you think a lot of these fraternities are they're like quote unquote rest haven, rest havens for a lot of DL people, a lot of DL men? Is that is that more prevalent than a lot of people think um, in a lot of fraternities? And I don't know, maybe in sororities too. But do you think that's kind of any well, truth no, I mean, behind that? It'd, it'd be the same if we were talking about police officers, we were talking about, you know, the sports field. You know, yeah. basketball players, football, you know, those who play sports. You know, uh, any player you have to be in an environment where it is, um, you know, like, for instance, you know, the fraternity is all about being macho and male and hard. Um, the high testosterone, the ego, even the sports. So the people don't necessarily think um, gay or down low can be a part of that culture, um, but yet you know there are a lot of men who are part of it. They just suppress who they are, right, right, in order to acclimate into those environments. Like mm-hmm. I talked about me in my fraternity, I had suppressed who I was, right, to be acclimated into my fraternity, but I also thought it would be a way for me to be around men, and maybe hopefully I won't think about men. I didn't use it as a scapegoat or a way to say, well, how can the other down one man let me join a fraternity? It was just more or less like, wow, I don't want to be getting this from me around more hard, you know, macho, you yeah. know, men. Then maybe, you know, I won't have the desires any longer. 